Greetings, good people. Karibuni sana to another Adulam Sermon Joshua series. Uh, we are now at Joshua chapter 6. Very exciting. Best. This is probably the one that I have been looking forward to the most. Anyway, so I have my audience here, Wamai and CK, <laughs> as well as you. <laughs> um, and in my previous sermon, we talked about um, the kingdom and the fact that God is wanting us to be able to go into all the world as his children, uh, as his disciples, and to be able to go and just enter into all spheres of society, that he's wanting that the kingdom that he has put in us would also be come manifest around us. Amen? So we talked about that, and I'd hope that you just, if you're catching us for the first time, that you'd go back and watch that and allow us to um, help you understand a lot about today. Now, today we're going to be looking at Joshua 6, right? And the thing that's so exciting about Joshua 6 is that, again, it's, I feel like it's so relevant to the current times that we're in. This is so beautiful. We, when we started this series, you know, we never imagined that it would go step in step with, with uh, what's happening in our world and, and around us. And it's just so beautiful and exciting for God to be, in a sense, manifesting these things as we are going along. And it's beautiful. And I believe that today's message is very much in the, in, in the context of the time that we're in, even as we're going through this book. Uh, so God's timing is perfect and great. Amen. Uh, like I said, I think we probably have maybe more two more Sundays on Joshua before we now move on to something else. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what God decides. Now let's turn to Joshua 6 verses 1 to 5. All right? Let's turn there. <clears throat> now, Jericho was tightly shut because of the sons of Israel. No one went out and no one came in. The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and the valiant warriors. You shall march around the city, all the men of war circling the city once. You shall do so for six days. Also, seven priests shall carry seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. Then on the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall be that when the, they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people will go up, every man straight ahead. Amen? Now, what's really dope about this whole uh, story is that it has so many like, great parallels around like, what's going on right now. So for example, you know, the city of Jericho at this point in time has gone into lockdown, right? So now there's a whole lockdown. No one is going in, no one is going out, right? Because there's an impending, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a virus on the outside <laughs> called the Israelites who are coming to take the land. So they go into complete lockdown. So there's an external threat, they go into lockdown. And the thing that is so interesting for me is that um, God says to Joshua, right? So Jericho had very, very massive high walls, right? It was a fortified city. And this city has gone into lockdown, complete lockdown, right? No one is going out, no one is coming in. And it's so amusing to me how, you know, God says to Joshua, as he's obviously standing there, I'm sure, with his, you know, army regalia, and they are ready for, they are ready to go into battle, right? And God is telling Joshua, see, <laughs> you know, it's like, look. And it's, I've given Jericho into your hand with its king and valiant warriors. You know, and for me, I like to kind of visualize situations. And I can kind of visualize and see, I can imagine Joshua standing there just being like, uh, okay, I guess because God is so excited about this, I guess, I guess we have the city, you know. And, you know, the thing is, is that um, why this is so amusing is because I think it's, it's really two different perspectives, right? There are those who are inside the city who are in lockdown, those who are outside who are seeing what's this lockdown space, right? And, you know, I think with all that stuff that's been happening in our world, you know, especially in regards to COVID, you know, lockdown is, 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 is not just, a, like when I say those words, everyone fully understands. I think if I preach this message another time, but now you're like, I completely understand what a lockdown is, right? Just by the thing that we're going through right now. And it's just interesting how 
you know, for many of us, we've been kind of wondering, you know, where is God in all this? And, and how are we supposed to understand and look at this situation, right? And I think for many of us, we see the situation that we're in like the people who are inside Jericho, the people who are in lockdown. But we don't see it from the perspective of those who are outside to see that this is actually an opportunity where God is saying, see. So while one, you're looking, it's a lockdown, the other perspective is, this is an opportunity that has a reason. And it's amusing and it's amazing because it's like, here is God saying to, to Joshua, see, look at the opportunity that I've given you. And so the, thing, the, the, the real thing for, is kind of like, you know, um, even when I look at for my, one of the things that I do is that I give a lot of, part of the reason I give a lot of business examples is because I'm an entrepreneur. And so that's kind of my worldview. So a lot of my examples come from business. You know, when I look at, for example, with our business, we are in the ticketing business, right? Uh, this, I mean, the, this has been a detrimental uh, impact on, on, on our business in terms of what we're able to do because of the line of business that we're in. And it's not just us. I mean, there are many people who have been very directly impacted and very immediately impacted, like, you know, the hospitality industry, whatever it is. But specifically for us in ticketing, it's like it, when we look at it, it's like a grim, gray picture of now what are we meant to do, you know, in this situation. And the thing is that there's two different perspectives because on the one hand, it's this thing has happened and look at how bad it is. But then at the same time, do you hear the voice of God saying to you, see, I have given you this whole moment is an opportunity. So many, there's not a single business in the world that has not been impacted by COVID. Not a single business, meaning that every single business has been forced to go to the drawing table and figure out what are we going to do. And so for some of us, we can look at that as a dire situation, but for others, we can look at this and be like, what a great opportunity. It's like the, the playing field is being leveled, you know, and it's like, what an amazing opportunity. And it's the same thing here in terms of um, whether it's in, whether it's maybe not business, but in terms of um, think about what COVID has done in regards to your own personal life. Some relationships have probably come undone, right? Or because you've been spending so much time by yourself, you've had to face yourself and there's some things that you're like, man, this moment, it's like I'm now having to face myself. And there's two ways to look at this. There's one way we can look at it as this is a dire situation or will we be able to hear the voice of God being able to say, see, look what I've done. I have literally given you an opportunity. In front of you is not just a lockdown situation and a dire situation. It's an opportunity that I've given you. See, do you see what I'm telling you? You know, there's um, in Isaiah 43, 18 to 19, it says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not see it? And I get that sense of through this God kind of asking us that I get what you're seeing, but do you see? Are you able to see beyond the high walls? Are you able to see beyond this lockdown space? Are you able to see the opportunity that I have given you? Or are you in a place where you only see the darkness and the dire situation that's ahead of you? And so that's the first thing that I feel like when I read this, it's that, that I, God really brought out is, do you see it? Do you perceive it? Do you understand that I am doing something new? Do you see the opportunity? Are you excited about it? The same way that I am, I am when I was telling Joshua, see, do you see? And so the thing is, is that he tells him, I've given Jericho into your hands. And uh, after this, he goes on to tell him, it's almost like he's saying, check out this gift I've given you. And now this is how you go and you pick it up, right? Check out the opportunity. So that's the first thing is like, do you see the opportunity? Or is it that you're looking at it in terms of it's dire or you see the opportunity? Yes, I see the opportunity. Aha, great. Now that you see the opportunity, let me give you some instructions on how we are going to go and go and take that opportunity, okay? Now that's what happens next. After he tells him, see, <laughs> I've given you this 
locked up place for you. These are the things that I want you to do to be able to go and get that stuff. Ha ha. So he gives him a set of instructions. He tells him, gather the men of war. Okay? And all you're going to do is, is that the ark is going to go ahead of you. Whew, if you guys remember the someone on the ark yeah, and what it means, the ark goes ahead of you. All right? The ark goes ahead of you. Then the second thing was, the ark goes ahead, the priests go ahead, and the priests are going to have what is called there. It's called the, uh, the shofar. The shofar, which is a trumpet. The priest will have the trumpet. And so the ark goes ahead. The priests will be the trumpets will go uh, ahead of the people. And behind is going to be the men of the men of battle. All right? And the goal was this is that they were supposed to march around the city wall. Okay? They march around the city wall. So for six days, they would march around it once. And on the seventh day, they'd march around it seven times. So that's a total of 13 times if you do the maths, okay? That's how they're supposed to do it. So the thing is, remember, the ark goes ahead, the priests, the men of war. Are we together? Woo! Come on! Hey! Anyway, so this sounds like very random instructions, right? Like, it's like, what kind of instructions are these to go to battle with? You get what I'm saying? This, you'd, you'd, you'd expect that it's like it would be one of those things for like, let us go take up in arms and create this slingshot that destroys the walls. And instead, God gives them instructions that are very like, it's like if someone came and told you this is how you break your leg. Yeah, but what else are we meant to do other than that? But it's just like, no, the ark goes, the priests, and I want you to follow with the horns blowing and follow this around. Now, like I told you, the trumpet here is called the shofar. Not like the driver, as in S-H-O-F-A-R. Okay, <laughs> not the shofar, the shofar. And, you know, you know the thing is, is that what, what you see about this shofar is that throughout scripture, throughout scripture, the shofar was used to be able to assemble God's people. It was like a battle cry. It was like a rallying call that would call the people together. And it would call them for different reasons. It would call them to fast and pray. It would call them to repentance. It would call them to appeal to God for mercy. It would call them in times of battle. It would call them in times of where there needs to be intervention. It would call them in terms of where they need to be memorial to God. And the thing about the shofar was that it, it, was, it was a symbol of the gathering, it was God gathering his people. Come and gather together. Come and gather together. And we see this consistently throughout scripture. This gathering was, was preceded by the shofar, the, the, the blowing of this trumpet, right? And in very simple terms, and how I want to relate this to, 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 to what I believe God is saying to us, there's two things specifically that I believe that God is saying to us through this this Joshua 6 from verse 1 to 5. And the first one is this. The first thing is that God is calling us to gather together and pray. God is calling us to gather together and pray. I look at this call and this message as me being the shofar. Calling the people of God to gather together and pray. The Bible says in Matthew 18 and verse 9, Again, truly I tell you, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples, that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. You know, the thing is, is that I don't know about you guys, but in the past two weeks, as you've been hearing this message of God saying, it's time, <laughs> right? That it's time for us to be able to occupy space. That it's time for us to be able to go into the world and make disciples. It's time for us to be able to occupy space in society. I don't know about you guys. I don't know about y'all. But me personally, I've been in this kind of place where it's kind of, in fact, we were having this discussion with uh, CK and Wamai about how it feels like you've walked into a very important meeting. 
<laughs> you know, very important meeting and you're hearing these high level conversations and you're there just kind of like, uh, I'm clearly not meant to be here. And you're told, no, 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 come and have a seat. You're actually meant to be here. And I've been getting, uh, kind of feeling this, this very kind of sense of an overwhelming sense of the task ahead. Like, it's like when God is here saying, it's time to occupy space in society. It's like, whoa, <laughs> you know, it's just like, wait, wait, what do you mean? Time as in time, time. And when you hear this word, there's something, at least for me, I'm, this, is, this is me, just feeling this deep sense of what, 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 what must I do? Where should I begin? How do I start? And I remember um, a few weeks ago, again, my business analogies, I remember a few weeks ago having a conversation with a colleague of mine. And this was literally after the, um, just COVID had hit and, you know, we we're talking about the future and recognizing just how detrimental the situation was and what had happened and how hard we had been hit. And I remember <laughs> saying to my colleague that, you know, my guy, this time next year, this time next year, MOOC is going to be is going to be spoken of the same way we speak of other giants in tech. And I remember, <laughs> I remember, you know, at the time when I was saying it, you know, with such such conviction and such such um, conviction in my heart around it. And I remember after the conversation, kind of a few days later, just being like, "What the heck was I saying?" You know, I was just like, I was like, "What?" And I remember in my mind just thinking, that is definitely something that cannot be accomplished by any effort that I put in. I, I mean, I, I cannot imagine what effort is required from me to achieve such an outcome. But I, I remember saying it with such conviction and belief. And it's kind of like Peter walking on water. Later on, I, I drowned a bit because I was just like, what was I saying? And how is that going to be possible? And the thing is, is that I know that we have been saying for the past two Sundays about us occupying space. And I'm sure for each and every single person, there's something specific that God has put in your spirit, that has put in your heart, that is this kind of insurmountable, large, massive wall. A thing that looks like how I see it and I see the city. See, but you're like, how? right? How do those walls come down? And what I want to put to you today is that I believe that the answer and the thing that God is calling us to is to unify as believers and pray. Remember what it says here, that if any two shall agree concerning anything here on earth, it shall be done by our Father in heaven. God is blowing the shofar. And he's saying, come together. The thing that I've put in your heart, that massive big dream idea, whatever is space I'm calling you to occupy, this big thing, he's saying, that how the walls come down, how the walls come down, is we pray. That we come together, we unify, and we pray. What that means to me is this, is that, we need to be able to enter into agreement and find other people who can enter into agreement with us in regards to specific things that God is calling us to pray about. And those specific things I truly believe because I believe that the God that I speak about is a God who speaks and I know whoever is listening, God is speaking to you. God is placing things in your heart that you know are big, massive walls. And you have no idea how you're going to accomplish this. I have a friend who called me recently and told me that God gave her this idea for a fashion business. And I asked her, so what's, and she's just like, think about honestly, I have no idea where to begin. And that's the thing that's the message today is that in the face of this insurmountable task that God is placing in our hearts and saying, I want you to move out of your walls and occupy space. I want you to go into all spaces. I want you to look into this situation in your family. I want you to look into this insurmountable situation in your marriage. I want you to look into this insurmountable situation in your society. And I'm wanting you to come into agreement and pray and pray. 
And so the thing is, today's message is this. That whatever it is that God is putting in your heart, these walls and the things that you've been hearing as I've been speaking about, the, the calling out and telling you, it's time, <laughs> it's time, right? The thing that God deposited in your spirit and in your heart, that thing will be accomplished. And so it's so important at this time to understand that this is not a thing for you to privately go and it is for you to be able to go and find other believers whom you can collaborate with and agree that these are the walls that we are going to circulate through with our prayer. Amen? Amen? And this is how we will gain victory. Here's the thing. I feel like this is kind of the same way. I know how you hear the Muslim call for prayer. You know, the hello. This is it. This is a call to prayer. This is a call to prayer. That Muslim call to prayer is a collective call to all believers in the faith of Islam to pray. I am coming here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the ark that goes ahead. And I'm calling believers to get into a space of prayer around the walls and the things that God is placing in our hearts that he's saying, I want these things to come down. Whether it's injustice in our society, whether it's things that you're seeing visibly within your own environment where God's kingdom is not visible and his will is not present. That he is calling us to come together and pray. Come together and pray. Come together and pray. In 1 Corinthians 10, 3-4 it says, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. My friends, this is how we wage war. This is how we see walls crumble before us. And so the first thing is this. Unify and pray. Unify and pray. God is speaking to you. Go and take those things and unify with others and pray around those walls. Amen? Now, the second thing is this. This is the second point, right? The second thing is this that we see from Joshua 6. Though God, in his power, in his mighty power, could have brought down the walls of Jericho from them marching around it just once. We know this. We know that the God that we serve, who was able to speak and things became to be, going around the walls once would have been enough and sufficient. But he had them go around the walls 13 times. 13 times he had them say, <laughs> once, every, <laughs> once every day, on the seventh day, I want you to go around it seven times. Friends, what I believe God is saying to us is not just that we must pray, but we must persist in prayer. We must persist in prayer. Do not give up until we see the walls fall. You know, there's a story that Jesus shares in Luke 18. And Jesus is speaking um, to his disciples. And it actually says in Luke 18, Jesus speaks regarding persistence in prayer. <laughs> there are two stories, in fact, in Luke 18 that demonstrate this, but the, the, the one is a parable and the one is an actual event that happens. So in the story, it begins, uh, in the beginning, Jesus tells his disciples, and basically it says here, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. It says in verse 2, he said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see to it. I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. <laughs> and the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And then he says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, 
when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And so the thing is, is that I've, I've heard this before where some people have, I've heard this personally, where people have told me, when you pray about an issue consistently, that it's a, it's a sign of disbelief. Because if you keep praying about it, it is that you don't believe that God has done it, right? Which is, makes sense, right? But that's the wisdom of men. What Jesus here is saying is that actually the demonstration of faith is your persistence in prayer. Your persistence in prayer is a demonstration of faith. Where he's saying, when he comes, when it's time, when it's time, will he find faith on earth? Will he find a people that are persistent in prayer? That are persistent in watching his kingdom will come into the spaces where it is not present? Will they be persistent in being able to pray through the things that God is placing in their hearts and persist in prayer until those things become visible and until the walls visibly crumble down? Remember when he told Joshua, see, when you're telling Joshua to see, the walls hadn't fallen. He was showing him and giving him the intention of what he wanted. But they had to march around those, those walls consistently until they came down. It is the same thing here, that God is calling us to persist in prayer. There's another story that is told here in Luke 18, where there's a blind man who hears that Jesus is passing by. Now, this blind man was a beggar. And so he hears that there's some commotion that's happening. So he can't see, but he hears there's some commotion that's happening. It's time. He hears something is going on. Something is happening. Eh? It's the same thing. Eh, something is going on here. And who, what, then he asks, what's happening? What's happening? And he's told Jesus is passing by. Some of you have been listening here. You've, commotion. You've been hearing. What's happening? There's, a, there's something going on. There's commotion in the world. And you're told it's time. And here's the thing. The blind man knew. This is my moment. And so he cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And he cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And those who are around and who are leading and who are around Jesus Christ tell him to be silent, be quiet. But it says here that he shouted all the more. He shouted all the more. And he shouted to the extent that Jesus stopped and ordered that the man be brought to him. And so the thing is, when the man is brought to him, remember this guy is blind. But Jesus, who knows all things, did not assume that he wanted his sight. Jesus asked him, what would you like me to do for you? And it says here, that he says to Jesus, I want to receive my sight. And the Lord says, receive your sight. But here's the thing. He says, your faith has healed you. Where was the faith that this man demonstrated? Remember, he cried out and the, the people around Jesus tried to silence him. But he shouted all the more because he knew it was his moment. And he shouted until he got the attention of Jesus. And Jesus tells him, your faith has made you well. And another thing is this. Jesus did not assume what he wanted. This blind man had to say specifically what it is that he wanted. My friends, this guy received his sight. He followed Jesus, praising God. And the thing is, is that we have to persist in prayer. We have to pray until something happens. We have to pray until the walls of injustice come down. We have to pray until the situations in our families are rectified. We have to pray until that person comes to faith in Christ Jesus. We have to pray until the structures and systems within our workplaces that are unjust and unjust and oppressed come down. We have to pray and persist in prayer until we see the walls come down. This is what God is saying to us. 
that the image that I see around the Israelites marching around the wall, to me is like the images that I've been seeing of the people who are marching for justice, right? That these guys are marching to the extent where the leaders are beginning to be like, my guy, we have to change policy. We have to change policy. But even the leaders who are leading the marches keep telling the people, do not give up. Do not give up until we see change. Keep going to the streets and the numbers are increasing. This is the same thing that I'm saying to us. That let us occupy the streets of heaven. Let us occupy the heavens with our prayer. Let us occupy the heavens with our prayer. Diligently speaking and asking and beseeching our God. That these walls must come down. That we must persist and persist and persist in prayer. You know, it's interesting because the protests are asking people to resist. I am asking people to persist. Eh? This is the persist movement. Yeah? Do not give up. Do not give up. Persist in prayer. Persist in prayer. Persist in prayer. Until we see these walls coming down. Do not give up. Do not give up on those things that God is placing in your heart. Do not give up on those walls that he has identified in your life. I have a friend who spoke to me about how, gave a testimony of um, her father who was uh, sick. And as she listened to the message that we spoke uh, last, last time, began to feel that God was calling her to intercede and pray for her, for her father to get healing. She sent me a message telling me that after praying and interceding, that she got a call from her mother telling her that your father who has not been able to walk today was able to walk and not only walk, he's able to jump. And not only that, that God did not just redeem his body, but also caused him to want to know God. That his whole, that his, not just his physical body was redeemed, but even his soul. That now this, this father who was completely not interested in things to do with God, now was curious about knowing about this God. My friends, this is the power of prayer. That the things and the walls that God is placing and the things and the cities that he's, the places that he's wanting us to occupy, and the things that he's wanting us to administer and demonstrate and bring forth his will, and to show forth his will. It could be anything. It could be a sickness. It could be addiction. It could be a f broke, breaking marriage. It could be a thing that you're seeing in society that you're completely convicted about. Whatever it is that God is placing in your heart to pray for. Join in, number one, unifying prayer. Go and find one other person. It says where two agree on earth and you agree that these are the walls we're going to patrol around and we're going to pray about this. But the second thing is this, is that we must persist, 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 persist in prayer. Ah, my friends, this is the message that I have for you guys today. This is the message that I have for you today. That even as we hear this message of it's time, that what God is calling us to do now is to unify in prayer and to persist in prayer. And I want you all to take on this and just listen. <laughs> be, like that, be like that woman who touched the hem of his garment. You hear the word and you go and you touch. Go and do this. It is time for the walls to come down. And the way that they come down, the ark goes forward, the priests go forward. We must pray. It is God who is able and willing and will be the one to miraculously and divinely break down and bring down the walls. Remember this, it says that the walls came down flat and the men were able to run straight in Think about that. The walls came down. Yani, they came down. Kabsa. <laughs> like, there was no atinini. And that we're able to literally go straight in to go take hold of that which God had prepared for them and had given them into their hands. This is how we will address the things that are going on. Amen.
All right, my friends, let us pray. Uh, I pray that this message will sink deep into your hearts. Let us pray. Dear King and Father, thank you so much for your word today. Lord, we recognize that you're calling us to prayer. This is the sound of the trumpet sounding and calling us as your people, that we would come and pray, that we would come and realize that the things that you're calling us to, the things that you're placing in our hearts, Father, I pray that for everyone who's listening, that you would place in their hearts the thing that you are asking them to do, the thing that you're asking them to pray over, that you would show them the cities in which that they need to occupy, the things in society that they need to go forth boldly and occupy, whether it's a business that they need to start or a vocation that they need to pursue or there's something that is going on in their family, in their community, in their society, whatever it is that you're placing in their hearts. And I know you're speaking to your people, O King, that I pray, O Father, that you'd light a fire inside of them, that they in their hearts, in their spirits, would hear the trumpet sounding, calling them to prayer. I pray, Father, that you would call forth unity, that you would surround every single person with another person, that you would help them identify another brother, another sister, that they can be able to join together to pray that we would be able to present ourselves in unified prayer before you, in agreement prayer before you, and we would come and we would ask that you would bring down the walls, and indeed you will. Father, I pray for every single person that heeds this call, that you would do as you have said, that you, O faithful Father and King, the King of heaven and earth, that you, O oh God, you who is able to bring down strongholds, you who is able to do the exceeding and abundant above all we could think, imagine, or even ask, that you would show yourself in every one of those situations and that you would answer every one of those prayers in your name because you have showed them the walls you want brought down. I pray, O oh King, that as we come as your people, that those walls would come down. I pray that you would put in us a heart that would not give up until we see you move. And until we see the walls come down. And until we see you manifest. My King, my Father, may you hear us when we call. For you are faithful and just. Indeed, you are doing a new thing. We perceive it. And we heed your call. We hear the cry of the shofar. Do as you have said. We honor you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this. Please share this with someone that you love. And if you have any questions or you have any comments, you can reach me on social media or you can email me. Also, to support this ministry, click the link below and also subscribe that you may be able to get regular updates on the videos that we drop. God bless you. Yeah, yeah. God, you never